Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. If it is your first time here, then hi, my name is Roisin. In 2023, I'm undertaking both a no-buy year and a budgeting project and today I'm going to be updating you with how I spent my budget in the month of March. In this video, I'm not going to explain my budget or outline it. I do have a playlist that I will link up in the eye that will take you through the introduction to the budget and the first budgeting videos that I have done. This is just my monthly check-in, so let's get right on into it. So my budget is theoretically £250 a month, however if you watched the last update video you will know I was over my budget at the end of February, which meant that actually I opened March, I was so much over my budget that I opened March with a budget theoretically of £80.69 rather than the full £250. Now I knew fine well going into March that I wasn't going to make it through the whole month on the £80 but I was hoping to pull it back a little bit in March so that if I pull it back a little bit again in April that we would be going into May back in a, a balanced book so to speak. But in terms of how I actually spent my money in March, I spent £122 on beauty services. £75 of that was getting my hair done. Speaking of my hair, just let's not speak about my hair and it didn't really go to plan. Still still learning how to work with this fringe despite the fact I've had it for ages now, trying to get it to kind of swoop into the rest of my hair when I curl it. We went a little bit orphan Annie today. It was meant to be a kind of 1920s bob vibe. Didn't really work but let's just not discuss that. And then £47 of it was my nails. Now I did have my Disneyland Paris trip in March so my nails were a bit more expensive than usual because I went for more of a nail art than I have been going for recently. So I already know in terms of April's budget that is not an expense that will completely be repeated although I will be getting my hair done right at the end of this month and I will be getting my nails done again right at the end of this month. I'll be going back to just plain nails and not having the nail art so that's something that I know I can pull back a bit on in April but I really liked having my Disney nails for my Disney trip so it was worth the, the use of my budget to get that slightly more advanced nail art and to pay the increased price for it. I didn't spend anything on beauty service replacement items. On beauty replacements I already did my quarter one beauty inventory update video so you will already know if you've watched that. I spent £9 on a new eye cream so this was from SVR, I actually, so I bought this in France, it was about 10 euros, nine pounds is what came off my card in pounds for it. But when I was looking this up to link it in the description of my quarter one inventory update, this is like 16 pounds on Sephora. So it's funny, like I feel like now, like going to the US used to be such a thing in terms of getting brands that we couldn't get here, whereas you can get most of the brands here now. And in terms of the US to UK ones, there's not usually that much of a difference price wise to be honest um, but yeah this is significantly cheaper to buy in France so SVR is maybe a brand to be aware of if you are in a French pharmacy we went to City Pharma I think I will link the one that we went to down below Lauren kind of I did the Disneyland Paris part of the trip organising and Lauren did the Paris part of the trip organising so she did the research found out that the one that we went to was kind of the biggest and the best one overall and in terms of like the more central ones so I will link it up down below but yeah SVR is a, a French pharmacy brand that is definitely cheaper to get in a French pharmacy than it is to get it in the UK or probably the US as well so uh, maybe just one to be aware of if you're going to France this summer. In terms of socialising I had quite a quiet month because I was away. It was actually only away over one weekend but the weekend before I was away I was getting ready to go away and whatever so um, I didn't do much socialising, I only spent £18.35 in socialising in the month of March. I didn't spend anything in work lunches which is very exciting, that's something that I want to keep going with, I want to be taking my own lunch, not spending money buying lunch at work. I didn't spend anything on experiences. On books and entertainment I spent £13.48. I bought two books, so I bought these two, Trespasses by Louise Kennedy and Medusa by Jesse Burton. As you can see, they were buy one get one half price in Waterstones, so uh, 13 48 on these two books. And then the last category is Homewares and Stationery and I spent £19.33. And that was on this egg that I bought in Paris. So it's actually an egg that had chocolate inside it and it's 
It's kind of funny because I bought some macarons as well, which came in a tin, but I haven't counted them because I wasn't buying them for the tin. I was buying the macarons, they just happened to come in a tin. And I'm sure I'll make use of the tin and it's a nice enough tin, but it's not like, it's not like something I would display. So I didn't, I just kind of counted that as like a holiday expense. Whereas this, I, although it's kind of a similar thing in that it was, it's a container as such that had something edible in it, I did decide that I had to take this from my budget because I was buying it as a thing that I was going to display as a homeware, as an ornament, rather than buying it for the confectionery. So it was from this brand, Come Test a Barry, and this is what it looks like. I think it's super, super pretty. Um, so it was 20 something euros, so 1933 is what came off my card. So it opens up, I'm going to figure out something to keep inside it, I don't quite know what. Um, but I thought that was really, really pretty and would look nice. Um, well, did look nice over Easter out on the mantelpiece downstairs where I ended up living. There we go, can you see that? I've popped it in the background there. So I thought that was really pretty, but I did feel I was allowed to buy souvenirs on holiday as per the rules of my no buy and I didn't need to take holiday expenses or souvenirs from my budget but I felt like that if I was honest with myself I was buying that as a homeware. I'm sure I'll always remember that I bought it on that trip to Paris but like it didn't really count as a souvenir in my head. My next couple of videos will be my pack with me for Disneyland Paris, my Disneyland Paris vlog. I keep calling it Disneyland Paris like I'm not a massive Paris person so to me the trip was far more about Disneyland than it was about Paris but Disneyland and Paris but anyway the pack with me for the trip then my Disneyland Paris vlog and then I will put up my haul video and I'll show you what I bought before I do my next check-in for my no buy just so that you've got the context of what I bought on holiday as my souvenirs and then also the context of this what I took from my budget before I check in about how I felt about my no buy because that was the first holiday that I've been on since the start of the year where I was allowed to buy souvenirs under my no buy and you know how that kind of felt so that video will be coming but those other videos will come first just so that you've got the context for that um, but I didn't feel that that counted as a souvenir or even that I was buying it for the confectionery inside the way that I was buying the macarons for the confectionery and that then just kind of counted as like holiday expenses like buying sweets on holiday that felt like it was bought with a different intention and I think it's important for me to to say that 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 was a thought process that I had that although on paper the things were very similar there was different intention behind buying them and it's important to me if I'm going to do this project to be honest about whether I think things do need to be coming out of my budget or do count as souvenirs when I'm on holiday or whether because it's it's not an exact science, I think, especially because I have said that under my no buy, I'm not allowed to buy things that I'm just buying because I want them when I'm on holiday, but I am allowed to buy souvenirs. Like, it's a, it's quite a grey area that I could have totally abused, but I don't really feel that I did that. And I feel like this is an example of me not wanting to abuse it. Like, I could have just called that a holiday expense because it had something edible inside it, but... I made the decision that it had to come from my budget because I didn't buy it for that reason. So I thought that was important to take note of is that I am trying to be as honest with myself and with you guys as possible about whether things do count as budget spends, holiday spends or souvenirs or if they'd be breaking my no buy to purchase them. That is everything I actually spent in the month of March. So in total, I spent £182.16. So if I opened with a budget of £80.69, I was still £101.47 over my budget technically. As I said, I knew I wasn't going to make it through the month on £80, but if my budget should have been £250 if I hadn't overspent in the previous months, I didn't spend the full £250. So I have clawed it back a little bit, which was what I wanted to do. And it means that I opened the month of April with a budget of £148.53. Now, I already know, I think I'll probably spend my full £250 in April. As I said, March was a very quiet month for socialising. And the, the flip side of that is that April is a very, very busy month. So I've got plans every single weekend. I'm actually filming this right now, then heading out. I'm going for a Sunday lunch, which I am 
very excited for. Obviously a red lip was probably not the best choice for going out to eat but it is what it is. So I've got a lot of socialising to do in the month of April so I feel like I'm going to spend quite a lot in that category. I will be getting my nails done and I'll be getting my hair done. They are both expenses that I probably could have done without this month if I'm totally honest but I have a conference right at the end of April for work so I want to get them done before that but I'm hoping because I'm getting them done right at the end of the month before my conference that I'll maybe be able to, not so much my nails because obviously they grow up and grow out and need redone but I'm not planning to get my hair done in May um, I'm planning for that theoretically actually to be July before I get my hair done again after I get it done at the end of this month so you know we'll, we'll see what happens but I am hoping that although I think April is not a month where I'd be over my £250 of budget if I had opened with the full £250 um, you know I am still hoping it'll be within the 250 mark but I don't think I'm going to claw it back that much in April so I think it'll actually be hopefully the end of May before I will have clawed it back and theoretically be opening June with my full £250 and be back on balance that way. That is what I'm aiming for. As I said when I went over the budget in the first place I am trying not to get too stressed about it. I'm trying to kind of hold it quite delicately and just you know let it be what it is be gentle with myself, give myself the opportunity to pull it back, accept when that is not going to be possible and know as well like the budget is there to be spent. Like I've calculated my budget because that is the amount of disposable income that I'm happy to spend on the categories that I have decided have to come from my budget. So holding it lightly, allowing it to be what it is, knowing that the money is there to be spent in my budget without feeling guilty about spending it even though I'm also trying to slightly reel back because I overspent in February but knowing that I can I can do that and not have to be in a sort of all or nothing mindset when I'm being very extreme and very frugal for a month like knowing that yes I overspent in February but I've clawed it back a bit in March April's maybe not going to be an opportunity to claw it back quite in the same way but May will come around and hopefully be that bit quieter so that's where my head is at that's what I spent in the month of March that's what I'm thinking April is looking like so I think that covers everything for this check-in of my budgeting project so thank you very much for watching it and I will see you in my next video which will be my pack with me for Disneyland Paris bye